Uh, there's a lot of great stud finders out there, advanced finders. This is just one that I happen to have in my toolbox. And uh, again, you can see it's got a, a AC scan mode, a metal scan, deep scan, and just a regular stud scan. Uh, I was able to use the uh, stud scan and identify the uh, studs, and then I'll use my very, very basic unit just to verify the accuracy. Um, the AC scan, I wasn't so lucky. I uh, really didn't have good results with this unit. Um, I definitely picked up uh, AC, but I couldn't pinpoint what I believe to be more of the exact location of the wiring here uh, behind the sheetrock. So let me show you what I used. Again, it's nothing but uh, an electromagnetic field detector. Uh, it's really just a little receiver that hones in on 50 or 60 hertz signals. And uh, you may ask, well, what's my signal source? Well, the signal source itself is one right above my head. There's a fluorescent light. And the way to use one of these, if you do so, again, just do so at your own risk. But uh, again, you, I think you can get fairly accurate um, readings. You'll see the uh, top plug here is my fluorescent light above my head. The green is my extension cord going out of my shop and it's running back to a hair dryer. Hair dryers uh, generate tons of noise and this is actually the load or what I now know to be on the output side of my circuit. Now this circuit continues, it goes back through a switch and feeds an outside light but again it's past the point of my workbench so I'm not really concerned about that. Okay, we'll just flip it on. There's just a little switch on the side, and you'll see it kind of go through a calibration state. Now you'll see there's a uh, little detector here to end a cap um, in this area. And as I move the unit up and down here, the sheetrock, as I get closer to the circuit, uh, you'll see that I get a peak reading. So again, that will be the location or the assumed location, I should say, of the electrical line behind the sheetrock. If you run back down here to the extension cord, let me show you what that looks like. So here's the extension cord. We'll do the same thing. Let me just power it back up. You can see here as I run in front of the extension cord and again I've just got a hair dryer plugged in which is generating a lot of noise. So that same principle applies here. You can see the circuit itself that I'm working now, the load is to my left and I'm going back toward the breaker panel. And uh, you'll see the the uh, level or the signal strength itself fluctuate a bit. And I think that's just because of the depth of the wiring behind the sheetrock and, and or other material. So sometimes, you know, I'll notice that the uh, signal strength might die off just a bit. And I do have some weird stuff going on. It looks like I've got kind of a loop of wire in the wall. I would love to open this up and figure that piece out. Um, but I did pop the wall plates off. And just confirm here, like where I'm showing this wire coming up, and it appeared to be going into the bottom side of the outlet. That is the case. And in this case, I've got uh, one that runs out of the top side. And then I've got another crazy loop here, which I can't explain. Um, but anyway, it's what appears to be in the wall. Uh, the good thing is my top will be down in this area so I'll be out of the way of um, what I believe to be an energized circuit. Time will tell once we get the uh, power driver out and uh, put some three inch screws through the sheetrock into the wood studs and we'll make sure that the uh, GFCI out here doesn't uh, reset itself. If it does then we'll be uh, cutting some sheetrock open doing some repair but uh, anyway, you can see how handy um, this appears to be. And again, I've used the same process before with uh, very good success.
So uh, thus, that's why I have uh, all these pencil marks all over my wall. Again, these will be covered up with my workbench and pegboard, which will be like a 4x8 sheet.